priests, as we call them on the prairies, or uh, investigators to come on your land for three years after you sign that contract, and they can go in your granaries, they can go in your fields, take samples with or without your permission, uh, uh, or they can, if you have another clause, if a farmer happens to commit some violation of the contract, they can make a farmer destroy his crop, take all the profit from his crop, or do anything what they want with the farmer. And another clause is that farmer is never allowed to talk or speak to anyone what Monsanto has done to him. But the latest clause is that if something goes wrong with the crop, and it's Monsanto's fault, if something was wrong with the seed, and, or, or something that was not right, the farmer can never gives up, the farmer can never take Monsanto to court. The farmer gives up that right even that he cannot sue Monsanto. So that gives Monsanto total control over the farmer. Now, it does not matter now whether a farmer has a science of contract or not. If you are contaminated and you had nothing to do with Monsanto, you fall under the same terms and conditions as if you signed the contract because they have a patent on that gene. Secondly, if you, you as a farmer would open up a bag of Monsanto seed, on the bag it states now, by opening this bag of seed, you agree to all the terms and conditions of Monsanto's patent law number so and so and so. So no matter what you do, you become under Monsanto's stuff. Uh, Monsanto, why do we single out Monsanto a lot? And the reason for that is, sure, I had major lawsuits against him, but Monsanto is the only company that does not want or permit a farmer to use his seed the following year. The other companies will do that. If you have grown that seed on your land, they allow you to grow a crop from it the following year, but not Monsanto. Monsanto now is the largest seed company in the world. They have gone from a chemical company and their flagship of making money was selling their herbicide Roundup. So they now are the largest seed company in the world. But further what they've been doing is that they've been buying up organic seed companies in the world. And in many areas of the world it's very difficult, and especially in California already, and it's going to come up the coast. It's very difficult for organic farmers in many areas now to get organic seeds or certain types of organic seeds because Monsanto owns them and now has stopped selling them. They just bought up the, out the largest organic seed company in California. So you can imagine if they cannot stop the organic farmers one way, they'll stop the organic farmers by the seed control. So I, I don't want to be an alarmist, but I just want to make you aware of what is happening out there in the control of the seed supply. And that is what it was all about. It was never about increased yields or less chemical. It's control of the world's seed supply and then the food supply because the world control of the seed supply is multi-billions of dollars and companies like Monsanto realize that. So that's what it's all about. So there's many other issues. Another issue that they were, they really want to try and get control not only by contracts or control of the seed supply, is to control or trying to introduce the terminator gene. And I think most of you know what the terminator gene is, where a seed is put into a plant, and all the seeds from that plant are sterile. And it can also, what they don't tell you, it can cross-pollinate into your organic neighbor's crop or a conventional crop or indigenous seeds or heirloom seeds and render all those seeds sterile also. That's a terminator gene. But we also now have, they have out a new gene, and we call it, there's another scientific name for it, new gene out, and we call it the, the cheater gene. And basically, this is how it works. The cheater gene and the terminator gene are inserted into a seed. The seed becomes a plant. But with the ter a cheater gene in it, the plant will not produce a seed until you spray a chemical on. And when you spray the chemical on, the plant will produce the seed and then the terminator gene kicks in and renders that plant, the seeds from that plant, total sterile. So that's how they'll try and are trying to get control of the world seed supply. If it's not one way, it's another way. Now, who owns the terminator gene? 50% now Monsanto, 50% the U.S. government. That's who owns the terminator gene. So 
so they're going to do everything possible to try and get control of that seed supply. Organic farmers. Uh, my wife and I were in Ireland a couple of years ago and we visited many uh, people that were raising seeds, uh, uh, organic seeds. And a lot of them, one of the ladies especially that had a fairly large seed company, she was very concerned that one of, she felt that one of her seeds that she was selling was now contaminated and she was scared that she'd get a lawsuit from Monsanto for selling that seed. So that's a fear that you have to be scared if you're a seed saver now. If they, if they can, uh, would contaminate or even put a patent on your seed, uh, you would not be allowed to sell it. So that's another very deep, deep concern. And I often feel, going back five or six years ago, when I go speaking around North America and other countries of the world, I had a feeling that organic farmers at that time did not realize how serious the situation really was. How you could lose, as we as seed developers, lost our rights to our seeds and plants for 50 years overnight. So we have to do everything possible. You have to do everything possible to write your members of parliament, to bring in the laws to protect your rights. Because if you don't, your ability as an organic farmer will be over. And it won't take long if they keep introducing uh, new GMOs. Lucy mentioned about corn, but I'd like to talk a bit about the flax that has just been, uh, that has been contaminated or refused from Europe. We sell about 80% of our flax to Europe. And that loss of that market is a tremendous economic blow, uh, as well as a lot of our honey now is refused because our honey is also contaminated with GMOs from the berries. But uh, who do you think, uh, who do you think, or who I feel is really responsible for the contamination of the flax is the University of Saskatchewan at Saskatoon. Because six or seven years ago, this is what happened. Nobody knew that the university and a person, a scientist by the name, or research person by Alan McCune, was working on developing GMO flax at the university. And in the spring of that year, he was going out to high schools, especially east of Saskatoon, in the heart of the canola growing area, and said this, and given packages of flaxseed to farmers, or the farmer's children, and said, take this flaxseed home. It's a new variety of flax that we've developed at the university, and see how your parents like this flax. Oh, no. And it was found out before seeding time, but very close to seeding time, it was found out in April, it was GMO flax. Well, you can imagine the uproar because there was no regulatory approval call, uh, uh, given to ever introduce flax, and so there was an immediate recall. But I'm sure that not all of the flax was returned because in some areas already it was in the ground. Now, so many years later, shipments of flax, or then it was withdrawn, and the university had destroyed all the GMO flax they had developed, and they had enough GMO flax for 60,000 acres. And it had to all be destroyed, the research on it. Well, you can imagine, I had many interviews at that time with the, with the TV stations, with the radio stations, and Alan McCune and university really went after me because of the tremendous loss. They felt the university lost $2 million on that venture. And, uh, but anyway, now we have contamination of our flax. So it took that many years, and now basically our, our flax last week before I left, dropped $4 a bushel in one day. So you can imagine what the farmers are going to take a hit on their flax this year with contamination. So that's another issue. Uh, alfalfa. Alfalfa, they, it, it's fully developed. Whether, it's, uh, whether it has been released, I don't know, but I got a strong suspicion it has, just like the corn. But, uh, they're just going to keep coming at you and at you. One other item I'd like to mention uh, that we're not, well, many people are not aware of, is what the, the pharmaceutical or pharma plants, pharmaceutical GMO plants. There are six major drugs now, at least six major drugs now being produced by GMO plants. And if, from memory, if I can pick up a quick.